I absolutely love Airbnb and you probably do too. Well, let me know in the comments if you don't. But today I wanted to talk about the big difference between getting an Airbnb for a short weekend versus getting one for a couple of months. Because if you want to work and travel, odds are you're going to be taking Airbnbs longer term, you know, sort of one month, two months, three months. And these are the 10 must ask questions to your Airbnb landlord before you accept the property. Trust me, I've made all the mistakes. I'm going to share all the answers today. <laughs> Cute intro and wardrobe change. Number one, if you're renting an Airbnb, you have to ask them, do they have a desk? Because you're gonna be working from home, right? You know, so do they have a desk? Do they have a kitchen table? You know, this is my kitchen table. I'm using this right now, but I also have a desk that Rufus is editing on right now. So that's a key one. Do they have a desk? Ask that question. The second one, ask them the Airbnb that you're pr probably gonna rent. Um, for to send you a photo of the speed of the Wi-Fi. That's super important. The last thing you wanna do is arrive there and realize the Wi-Fi is struggling or it's struggling to download because then you kind of, that whole point that I mentioned at the beginning about communication and making it as easy as possible for you to live and work where you're going, for your company to accept that, is to just be set up as good as you are where you were before. I'll link it below for a Wi-Fi test. There's a Wi-Fi test which is free online, which, which is basically through Google. And then they you can even send them that link. Some of them won't know what to do. So what I've done is I've said, could you please please send me the screenshot of this Wi-Fi test and I give them the link and then they run the test and it just, you know you've got a good test. They can't have faked it or, any, or anything like that. For me, as someone who has insomnia, the comfortability of the bed is so, so important. So I've actually asked every Airbnb that I stay in, how comfortable is the bed? Like, be honest with me, is it soft? Is it like some really cheap Ikea bed? I, when I was in Barcelona, I had to actually buy a topper for my bed because it wasn't comfortable enough. Luckily enough here in Lisbon, it, it's really comfortable. And here's a top tip for this actually. Figure out if the flat you're gonna rent is literally only an Airbnb flat, which means that they probably haven't spent as much as they would have done if they lived in the flat. So figure out if you're renting from a company that's renting flats out for a, for a living, meaning that all the equipment is probably Ikea, it's the cheapest that they can afford, uh, and it's basically just high turnover, people coming and going all the time, right? Because if you're renting a flat that someone lives in, you're gonna get a lot more for your money. You're gonna get pictures on the walls. You're gonna get like maybe a blender. You're gonna get a lot more nice things like uh, more glasses because someone lives there and they, and you know, like they, it's you're living in someone's home versus living in some kind of, you know, service department, right? So bear that in mind as well. To that as well, find out what kind of kitchen utensils you have because like in Barcelona, for example, my flat was literally a flat that was only rented out for, um, no one lived there. It was just rented out and rented out on Airbnb. So the bed was really uncomfortable. Uh, all the furniture was like baseline minimum Ikea. And that's fine. It was perfectly uh, fine. But like the kitchen was limited. We didn't have many pots and pans. The oven wasn't a proper oven. It was a microwave oven. And if you're going to live there, remember, you're going to live there. You, yes, you're going to go out and eat out and enjoy yourself. But you also want to cook at home. Maybe you want to invite some people around for dinner sometime. And that's really frustrating. I know Rufus had that one in his flat first when he moved to Lisbon. They actually moved after a month because their flat didn't have a nice kitchen. It was like a pied de terre type kitchen. It only had like two hobs and not even a proper oven. Also find out if the building is just Airbnbs because I've had that issue in living in like, for example, this building right now, um, the, there are a lot of just Airbnbs in the building, meaning that a lot of people come and go for a weekend or for a week. And typically when they come and go for a weekend or, or a week, they hit a party. So, and they don't care about their neighbors because they're never gonna see them again. Some people are nice, some people aren't. So I've had, last Saturday, I had a, like a bunch of 18 year old kids, I think, who probably lied to the landlord and said there were just two of them. There were like 12 of them, they rented the flat below me and they had a 24 hour rave. Lucky for me, I got to sleep in the back of my flat. Um, but uh, so I didn't hear the noise and I gave them the benefit of the doubt. But you, the last thing you wanna do is be working uh, from a flat as you're living and working for like two, three, four months. And then there's just constant parties happening everywhere. You can't sleep. Uh, they're disrupt disrupting your Zoom meetings. So just bear that in mind. It's totally fine if you're gonna live and work somewhere for and take an Airbnb. Ask the people uh, that you're renting from. Okay, look, be honest with me. Is it all Airbnbs? It, you know, is it a party part of town? Be honest with you because you, you don't wanna make the wrong choice of where to live. 
ask about the local grocery store network. Like you wanna know what grocery stores around you. Do a bit of research on Google Maps, like what's around you. Find cool cafes that are near you. Find cool restaurants that are near you because that's the reality. When you live and work somewhere, you're not going for a weekend, you're going for several months. So you need to have a good community around you. You need to have the kind of restaurants that you like to go to, not too far from you, because it's nice to just go out for a lunch or for a dinner and not have to get taxis and buses and trains, right? Um, so do your research into the neighborhood that you want to live in before you agree to live in a neighborhood. Don't let the flat decide, let the neighborhood decide. So you can find an amazing flat. Sometimes it's not in the right neighborhood, but you haven't researched the neighborhoods. But you can find an amazing neighborhood, and trust me, you want to choose a neighborhood over the property. Also, co-working spaces. Now, um, obviously, things have been closed, obviously, for the last couple of months here in Lisbon, so I haven't joined one. But a good thing to do is actually join a local co-working space because then you, you're probably going to be guaranteed great Wi-Fi. It's probably not going to cost you too much if you're sort of in Southern Europe, 100 euros, 200 euros a month, maybe, maybe less. And you get a hot desk. Basically, you go there. But also, you're going to meet people. So if you're alone or you're traveling even as a couple, it's great to meet other people. A great way to do that is at a co-working space. So look into cool co-working spaces. Odds are there probably will be a few where you're going. And that's a great way to sort of meet people. Another way to meet people is going on Facebook groups. So there's a lot of these expat or travelers in Lisbon or wherever, whichever city you're going to. Join those Facebook groups before you want to go and get to get a feel for the kind of people that are in there. People will probably post flats in there. People will probably post um, networks and meetups when we're all allowed to do that. Um, that's a smart way to sort of actually get a feel for a city and a community and if there is a community there. I've been, I've been connected to a few now and there's a lot of really nice people I've met. You're going to meet like-minded people as well who are leaving other cities to do what you're doing. So it's a great way to meet people. Another one that I've had a friend's girlfriend use is Bumble BFF. Bumble, which is, you know, most people think of as a, a dating app or it's more of a relationship app actually. They have a BFF, like best friend um, product where you can actually go meet people. It's mostly, I think, meant for women, um, but I'm, I, I think men can use it as well. And it's a great way to meet people. And you can you know, actually like connect with real people in your local city and meet up with them and make friends. Um, so I highly recommend you checking that one out too. And lastly, make a plan of what you want to get out of the city because you're not just going there to live and work like you do in your home city. You're going there to live, work and travel and experience. So make a list of things that you want to do. Make a little bucket list of things that you want to experience while you're in that city. And I wish you the best of luck. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want me to talk about. I'm going to make a few more videos about the tax rules on this. I've got a lot more content and information about Airbnb, must do's, must haves about accommodation and things like that. Um, reach out to me at Matt C. Smith on Instagram if you have any more. You can follow my journey there or Ruth Rufus Tangan on Instagram too. Hit us up at Lunacorn uh, to see the behind the scenes of all of this. So I guess that's it from this video. I hope you got some value from it. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Matt C. Smith. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.